QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Accounts payable graphs, exporting data from QuickBooks to Excel, creating the graphs in Excel. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks desktop sample rock castle construction practice file provided by QuickBooks going through the setup process we do every time. Maximizing the home page to the gray area, going to the view drop down, noting that we got the hide icon bar and open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left hand side. Going to the reports drop down, company and financial, opening up the profit and loss, ranging to the change in from 01, 01, 24 to 12, 31, 24, January to December, that is 2024. Customize it and then go to the fonts and numbers, change it, bring it on up to 12, okay? Yeah, okay. And then go into the reports drop down again, company and financial, this time the big balance sheet. Hitting the drop down, we're going to the fiscal year 123124 to customize fonts and numbers, changing the font to 12 and OK and saying yes and OK. That's what we do every time, opening up the major two financial statement reports, all other reports pretty much, giving us more information, expanding upon one or multiple line items in the major financial statement reports we have open now. Now we're looking at the graphs that are related to the accounts payable, giving us more detail on the balance sheet account of the accounts payable, noting, remembering, accounts payable represents us owing vendors for goods and services provided to us. And we can see the sub report of that broken out by vendor by going to the reports drop down up top company and I'm not company, vendor and payable, vendor and payable, I should say because that's the proper thing. That's what we're doing. And then we're going to go to the vendor balance summary right here. Boom. And there's the 26,6,36,92, which should tie out to the big balance sheet. 26,6,32, that looks good. Back to the vendor balance summary. Let's make it a little bit larger on the font just so you can see it uh, more clearly. More clearly, because it's bigger. And your, if your eyeballs are not as good like mine, then you can see it better. So there it is. Now we want to make a graph of that. So we have a graph in Excel. We looked at or in QuickBooks. We looked at last time. We could find it by going to the reports drop down, vendor payable, and we can take a look at the graph, the graphical, accounts payable graphical, and there it is. It's nice, it's colorful, but it's pretty static. We can't do much more with it. And I would like to do much more with it, having different colors possibly breaking out. Uh, in a different format over here on the vendor side of things as well. So it would be easier then, I would practice then taking the data where it comes from, exporting it to Excel, and that's a good practice to kind of see how that graph is made, how we can apply it to other graphs, and then some Excel tools to simply make it in Excel. And this is a nice, easy report to make a pie chart from. So let's do it. I'm gonna go back to the vendor balance summary. We're going to go to export to Excel. I'm going to create a new worksheet. I'm going to put it into the existing workbook. If you don't have a workbook, that's okay. You could just make a new workbook, but I'm going to put it into the existing workbook, which is going to be that month end reports that we've been working on. And then, okay, if you, if you, this is the first time you see, you don't know what I'm talking about, then we've been working on this report, uh, but you don't have to, you can make your own. And so there it is in Excel. I'm going to maximize this. I'm gonna grab that sheet by clicking on the left click and drag it to the right so it's the last thing we have here. Double click on it so I can change the name. I'm gonna call it AP Data, Data for our graph. So there it is. Now, I I'm very zoomed in because when I work on QuickBooks, I wanted to zoom in the screen. So I'm gonna go into my settings. These are my window settings for the display settings. 
and I'm gonna scale it back down to just 100 the recommended settings because I've been zoomed in so if you need to do that if you have different settings you can do that it looks a lot smaller over here now I'm gonna zoom back in by going down here instead of a hundred percent I'm gonna hold control and scroll in so I can see a bit more so there it is and I can see are there any any special formattings here no the total totals up so that looks good I'm gonna delete the total column I don't need the total column I'm gonna click on column 19 that's a row not a column I'm gonna click on row 19 number 19 which is a row don't you know what a row is compared to a column rows are horizontal columns okay I know I just messed up I'm gonna put my cursor on number one up top the row the row right click on it and hide and then delete it and then put my cursor on the column of a we don't need it either right click on it and delete it now notice the formatting is a little bit different because it's quickbooks formatting here we've got this i want to bring it to excel formatting so i'm going to put my cursor on excel outside the data go to the home tab and go to the format painter and then i'm just going to click the little triangle formatting the entire thing then i'm going to put my own formatting in the entire worksheet right clicking on it format the cells and i like to make the formatting then be currency bracketed numbers for negatives no dollar sign let's get rid of the decimals because we don't need them we don't need no decimals that's just gonna make more problems so there we have it and then i'll make this a little smaller between a and b by putting my cursor between a and b and then making it smaller like that <laughs> and then i'm gonna i'm gonna select the data here i'm gonna select the data let's put makes make it into a table and so i'm gonna insert a table insert tab table boom and it's got this thing down here i'm gonna say okay tableized it it's been tableized and then we can sort it using our little filtering options up top sorting it by who we owe let's go from z to a so this is the top person that we owe money to for goods and services we provided from the vendor or we bought from the vendor for our business we could add a total column down below if we so choose by going to the table design put the total column back in there's the 26 636 which should tie in still to what was on quickbooks 26 636 it should tie out to what's on the balance sheet which was the 26 636 it does indeed so there we have it and so now we can simply make this into a pie chart and we could do that by just selecting the data I'm just going to select this data and notice we might want to like remove or shorten it a little bit but we'll make a pie chart with all of it first and then we'll see it has some skinny some skinny slices and then we'll adjust it so the pie chart is easy as pie to 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 make we just go to insert pie chart boom there's the 3d one again i don't like the 3d one but you could do this they also have this disc one which is kind of cool that one's a new age new age pie chart but we'll go to the standard pie chart up top there it is maybe we don't need a title maybe we do that but it's got a lot of slices it's quite small it's got too much going on here so what am i going to do i'm going to say let's go let's make make it like the one in quickbooks one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so this one down here everything below that let's let's make that other that adds up to 2985 so i'm just going to make this one 2985 and delete all these column or row 13 through 18 right click and delete i'm going to make this other now and so now it looks a little bit little bit nicer I can make it larger maybe so but maybe it's still it's still too much going on there so maybe we shorten it down a little bit more maybe i'll make it up to like here so i'm going to say that adds up to two seven three two seven three two or seven two three two i'm dyslexic seven two three two that's okay i'll figure it out this we're going to right click and delete it still adds up to the 26 637 which ties out to here right so we've got 26 six yeah that's right and then this is going to be other so now we've got a nice smaller kind of pie chart we might want to 
drag it down. We might want to adjust the, the design of it, possibly adding, adding a key, a different kind of format of the key, percentages in it, something like that maybe. And again, we have a lot more options to adjust the color scheme of it and whatnot. We could adjust the color scheme and so on up top, something like that or whatever. And so you got a lot more flexibility. That's the point. So then we could do the same thing with the other. I know this is quite small because I'm going back over here and this the, the looks small, but the other chart is based on, this chart is based on the aging report. So if I go to the aging report, reports drop down and we go into the vendors and payable ap to the ag and current one to 30 let's well i'm just going to make the totals are all we need so i'm just going to go down here and say all right well then let's just i don't even need to export that i'm just going to go little table i'm going to put that whatever that is so that it doesn't like format my numbering weird well, let's do this. This is going to be current. I don't need one for current. And then that, and then 1 to 30, and then that, and 31 to 9, 31 to 60, and then that, and 61 to 90, and then over 90. Those are our categories, typically. And now let's just go plug in the numbers, which I can just, I don't have to export. I'll just type them in there. Two three one seven 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 two two three one seven seven point seven two. Is that right? Two three two three one seven, and then three four five zero point two, three four five zero point two, and then and then that should add up to twenty six. That's it. So there's nothing in this category. That category, which should total up, sum it up, sum it up little that doesn't tie out 26 528 this comes out to 26 636 so 23 17772 23 177 so there it is no 23 17772 and it's too small i can't see it 345920 three four five nine twenty okay there we go and then we could just make this into a bar chart or whatever so we can go insert up top and put it put a bar chart or something like that and see how easy that is and now we've got all the flexibility we can change the column sizes and and uh, the x and y axis numbers and so on to adjust that if we so choose we can adjust the color scheme of it we can you know do different you know we can do a whole bunch of other stuff with it now if i wanted to not show the data files we can once again make another tab down here i'm going to do that with a little plus item i'm just going to call this the ap graph and then maybe i just copy the graphs over here maybe i just want the graph i'm going to control c copy it paste it on down right here and then i'll copy this graph copy it paste it on down right there I'm going to go to the view page layout back on over so I can see the end of the screen and say how, how large could I make these graphs. Maybe I want to make it landscape so that this time so that I can make it bigger. So now I could say, okay, let's make it, it seems like it didn't switch to landscape. Back on over, it's on landscape orientation. It's not making the change orientation landscape bring it here to here orientation landscape okay whatever we're going to bring it into here and then this one we can bring it back out so there we have it okay and then if i wanted to hide this data tab i can right click on it and i can hide it so that when I print all this stuff on one report, it'll just it'll just print what I want here. So I can go back to the file tab. I can go to the print. We could say that's not print. We can go to the print, print it using the cute PDF printer. And there's our option. It's still not doing the landscape thing, which is kind of annoying, but I'm not going to get into it too much right here. It's because we'll just just given some examples. If I hit the drop down, we want to see the entire worksheet. Then I can scroll down. We got 25 pages on this thing now. 
And if I go all the way to the bottom, we've got our graphs that we made. Here's the la last graph. If I scroll back up, it's got the prior graph. It doesn't have the data tab because we hit it. So that's a nice way that we can put all this stuff on one PDF using our Excel, which we'll do in a future presentation. There it is. I still am kind of annoyed that it's not there. It switched to landscape. So now I can make it landscape. Why you, why aren't you, why weren't you working before? You're making me look stupid, Excel. You make me look stupid. I hate when you do that. That's okay. Whatever. I look stupid all the time. Here we go. There, so there it is. And then this one. Okay, so, so now if I go back on over here, file, and we, we're going to say print it, and then the entire worksheet, and I can go back to 26 page. So there it is. So now it's on landscape, so we can make a larger one landscape, and it still shows on a PDF if they were to watch it digitally instead of printing it. It looks nice. If they're going to print it, then we got this issue where you got to staple it sideways and whatnot, which is, <laughs> that is driving me crazy, I swear. But there it is. So there it is. Okay.